If you are interested in practicing Ho'oponopono to solve personal problems and improve the various aspects of your life, please make sure you watch this video to the end. It is important to know the differences of the two versions of Ho'oponopono, as taught by Hawaiian Kahuna Morna Simona and by her student Dr. Ahili Akalahulen. Not only their methods are different, probably their effectiveness differs too. So, what is Ho'oponopono? Ho'oponopono means to make right or to make good. It is an ancient Hawaiian healing method. Traditional Ho'oponopono is practiced by indigenous Hawaiian healers. It involves the participation of an extended family. Often it would take hours and hours to reconcile an issue or a conflict among family members. In 1976 Morna Simona applied the traditional Ho'oponopono to a general problem-solving process beyond the family. She also adapted the traditional group process to a personal practice without losing its effectiveness. She named this new process self-identity through Ho'oponopono. She founded a not-for-profit organization, the Foundation of I, Inc. Freedom of the Cosmos to preserve and promote her modern Ho'oponopono. After she passed away in 1992, her prominent student, Dr. Ahili Akalahulen, became chairman of Foundation of I. In around the mid-2000s, he began to promote his version of Ho'oponopono. He partnered with Joe Vitale, who was a law of attraction advocate, to publish the book Zero Limits in 2007. The book was a marketing success. It helped promote Dr. Hulen's reinvented version of Ho'oponopono on a large scale. Today, IZILLC, an affiliate of Foundation of I and Pacifica Seminars, Germany, are still giving classes based on Morna Simona's teachings, although they too are not 100% original. Other followers, including Joe Vitali and Mabel Katz, continue to teach Dr. Hulen's version. Almost all YouTube videos are based on his version. Let's go to the tape. Ladies and gentlemen, Morna Simi Ona. That the Hawaiians refer to these aspects of mine as a pyramid or a triangle. The lower portion would signify the low self. The next one would be the middle self or the conscious mind. And the top is your omakua or higher self. So, we actually look at it in this light. Hawaiians felt always that we were at one with a divine source. So when we are at one with a divine source, we are said, I am the I, never the I am. I am the I now and always. It's always in the present tense. So the triangle is encased in a rectangular form like this. So the rectangular form here, represents the I that we're talking about. So the low self here is a part, or our computer is here. The next portion here is our conscious mind. And this portion here is the high self, or the omakua. So when this is what we refer to is the makua, or the father aspect of us. This is the mother aspect of us. And this is the child of the other portion. This is the low self. Father, mother, and son. This is why our prayer of father, mother, son as one calls our attention that we are always at one with the father. Unless the low self is so out of line and imbalanced that it becomes larger in this area, so it overcomes the conscious. But otherwise, when you're balanced, this is the way you look. Now, we have a prayer for someone, supposing we were. So, the conscious mind sends the message down to the low. And the low self gets all the ingredients together, reconditions the molecules and metabolism. So what it does, it gain, go, goes up here and joins forces with the conscious and together up here and out into the cosmos. And then we turn around and this is the inflow of the energy into this rectangle. So when it does that, it gets down to here, it fills up the space here. And this is when complete healing is taking place. That means the divinity of the person is made manifest through the energy brought in from the cosmos.
Now, when we talk about the subconscious mind or the low self, the unhipili, my concept of unhipili is that which attaches itself to an object. Now, we say unhipili. The u means to grunt, and nihi means to creep steadily around, and pili means to attach itself. Now, since if this is my book, and I had it for about 10 years, so my own unhi pili has attached itself to it. And then I pass it on to someone else. And that person's unhi pili is being put over it. And so it goes on. The people who touch, the people who own or handle the object. So we find a great deal of problems in those who are, are collectors of artifacts. And this would kind of make you think twice about collecting antiques and artifacts. So it kind of gives you an idea how the unhi pili works. It attaches itself. Even after death, even a million years, the attachment of the individuals on that object is still there. Of course, we have the conscious mind, which is the uhani. It has the free will or reasoning power. Could you erase that? Thank you. It is a link between the low self and the high self. It helps self to send pictures and messages to distant parts and at distance. It is a teacher and a guide to low self. It is of a higher voltage than the low self and is stronger. However, there are exceptions. When you find that the low self has greater power than the middle self, then you find a problem there. We find that true among those who are drug addicts alcoholics, or any of these other cases that sort of run amok in our community, it means that the conscious mind is overwhelmed or overpowered by the low self. Now, when we look at the subconscious mind that it has the free will and the freedom of choice, it is the storehouse of mana, it is the computer. So when we are dealing with one another, we are talking about one another's computer. So. So in the, in the work of Ho'oponopono of problem solving, what is problem solving? I think we all have problems in our daily life. It ranges from the lowest to the highest. Now Ho'oponopono means to correct, to set a right, to restore a good relationship, balance, and peace of mind. Now I specifically say balance. We are very particular about creating balance in ourselves first, never mind the other person. We do for ourselves first, and then those around us. Now, we have to repent, is the word mihi, is to repent, to apologize, regret, to be sorry, to confess. Now, mahiki is that portion of the process, is to vibrate. Now, when I'm asking you for forgiveness, we are vibrating that area within your computer or memory bank. We are sifting. So, mahiki means to vibrate, to peel off layer by layer from one incarnation to the other, to pry and to weigh. So all these are taking place during the period of confession. Ho'omalu is that period of rest to reflect, a period of silence. Now this happens when we have a group and then a person uh, creates a problem. He's resentful and, and sort of a, creates a, a confrontation among. So the leader of the group calls a recess. And when you have a recess, it means you are not to get out of your seat, you stay there and have, take closer introspection of yourself. And then we start again. So the pulley we open with a prayer and we close with a prayer because the Hawaiians always believed that any, any type of work that is done must open with a prayer and close. So the objective, uh, the purpose of Ho'oponopono is that to use the process as a simple, infallible, effective method to solve problems between a patient and a family friends, co-workers, 
an emphasis on self-introspection and karmic cleansing. So the conclusion to your whole problem solving is the release and the erasing of mental blocks. Now I'd like to s emphasize on this. It's very important. It is the release and erasing of the mental blocks, emotional trauma, from the individuals involved, whether involved personally or in absentee. It opens a whole new world of good, success, prosperity, happy, continual relationship, and good health. This, see, the thing when you're creating this, doing it for yourself, cleansing divine, creative father, mother, son as one. If I, Morna Simeona, has offended you, now you're talking about the divine creator, in thoughts, words, deeds, and actions from the beginning of my creation to the present, Humbly, 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 I ask forgiveness on behalf. Uh, we ask forgiveness and go all the way through to the end. Now, instead of saying, will you forgive us? All I say, forgive us. Instead of will you. And then finish with the other. So we will have them printed for you. So it would be easier. So this is two parts. Part one and part two. And you are doing two parts. You are handling part one, and you're taking the part of part two, and then part two goes up and does the first portion. So in other words, I'm asking forgiveness of you, and you in turn ask for me. That, that creates that round. See? It wouldn't do if I was to ask her for forgiveness and she didn't of me, because it still leaves that unfinished un, uh, link. Thank you, Morna. Now, let's bring in Dr. Ahilia Kalahulen. Um, when we were initially created at the beginning, we were nothing. Blank, no data, perfect in every way. Didn't have to think, didn't have to make money, didn't have to do any of this sort of stuff. So no data playing. And then out of that, out of that no data, which is what, what Buddha called uh, void, up comes this, what Buddha called enlightenment, which is the, the source of the light. And then that source of the light decided, and I don't know why and how come, I'm, I, and I'm not interested, decided to create each one of us, and created each one of us infinitely zero. So that's how we began. And so what does it mean to be infinitely zero? It means we experience heaven on earth, nirvana, art beauty, love, until something come, came along um, and it, it brought darkness. What happens is that, that at any given moment, 11 million bits of information is playing, for which you are unconscious of. Yes. So it's driving you. So you don't have free will, but you have choice. The choice is like Shakespeare is saying, to be or not to be free of the data. Mm -hmm. You have that choice, but the data is going to run you. The only question is, what data is going to run you? Is it going to be inspiration or is it going to be memory, which is dead stuff? Mm -hmm. So that's the choice, but you don't, one doesn't have free will. You, you must come to the realization that you're always there when a problem arises. You're never not there. So if, the, if you're always present when a problem arises, the question is, what's going on? And for this process, the question is, what's going on in me that I'm experiencing problems? And so you have to get to the cause, because the basic law of cause and effect is, what causes me to experience such? And the answer is simply, there are only two, two sources for experiences. One, memory replaying or inspiration. There's no other sources for experiences. There's just no other sources. The memory replay. Yeah. It's like a, a tape, isn't it? Yeah. C D, tapes, scripts. So so for example, um the genetic makeup of our of our of our being in ourselves, it's all historical data. So we're we're old machines running on um genetic material that's been accumulated over billions and billions of years. Years ago, um, 
by a very world famous biologist at, was asked, "Can you tell us something about yourself?" His response was, "I'm embarrassed because my ancestors began as bacteria." Yeah. So we're we're connected to all of all of the forces of the universe um, through historical experiences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the question is, how do we do undo this histo- any historical problem so that we can begin anew? Yeah. Always beginning anew. And the only way you can do that is you have to clean the slate. So, having to take 100% responsibility for that. What's going on in me is that I'm creating this experience. And so, I just do this cleaning. And the cleaning, the Ho'oponopono, is about going into the self, and specifically into the subconscious, and where the data is, and since everything is run by information, so the information in my subconscious is saying, is dictating to me what I'm seeing, what I'm experiencing. It's and so if the data is such that I'm, say, I'm making, I'm experiencing, I'm suffering, or I'm experiencing people being goofy, then I have to be responsible for that. What's going on in me, and it's simply data playing, and more specifically, memories replaying in the subconscious. And those can be erased. Mm-hmm. I think that is probably the most profound thing about uh, this whole Ho'oponopono is that you can erase data. Could you? So there, I, I want you to know there's only one, there's no two or three gods, like in the Greeks. The Greeks had many gods. The Romans had many. But for you, or at least the pitch I'm going to make, you only have one, one, one divinity. So now here, here is this here is this person called, I'm going to call the Papa. And here's me to keep it simple. So in the beginning, when we were created, we were created perfect, see, zero. Which zero means nothing happening. Pure state of bliss. It's kind of like nothing to do, don't have to work, don't have to earn a living. Don't have to worry about being in a relationship. What? No relation? Oh. <laughs> You're free. And this is the way you will always be. Now, the problem is, so now the Papa shows up in my life, and this is me. Papa says to me, my son has this problem. Well, the reason Papa is saying it is because we have memories in common. Simple as that. Papa wouldn't tell me that if I was free and he was free. He'd tell it to somebody else. But there I am. I'm stuck. So now, what happens is you can, you can do what with it? What can you do with this if you or me? Take it up to the divine. Yeah. Okay, but if, well, let's, what's the usual route to go? Erase it. What's the usual route? Try to fix it. Yeah. yeah. The idea is you're going to try to say, well, how come? Why? I mean, you know. But what you don't realize is that behind the papa is zillions and zillions and zillions and zillions of family relatives and ancestors. So if you take papa on, you're taking them all on. This is how, if you do it, if you think you're going to, you're going to do it to them, you're going to get burned to the max. You're taking on a whole slew of people. So the way to do it is very simple. So if you say, if you're willing to be 100% responsible, you have to say, what's going on in me that this, I should experience between this with the Father? So you go very simple. So now, the, the conscious mind, this is the conscious, this is the subconscious, and the because I'm talking about me and you. So now the conscious mind has to say, uh oh, what is going on in me that I experience this? Not what's his problem. You ever notice we're always saying what's the other person's problem? Not here in Texas, only in, only in Hawaii. Yeah. What's the problem? Okay, now I do I do the cleaning. So let's let's do the cleaning call. I love you. I love you. That's, that's the conscious mind has decided it's going to be 100% responsible. And as you remember, when I said I love you, 
What was in, what, what is involved in that? What is the element involved is repent. I'm sorry. Forgive. Please forgive me. And then the, the, the transmutation. So over here, I do the cleaning. I go, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. The thing goes down. It never goes up. It always goes down to the subconscious because that's where the problem is. Always goes down. So when you make a petition, if your petition directly to divinity never works, it's going the wrong way. It has to go down into your soul where the problem is. So now it goes down. It goes up to the superconscious of the spirit. You'll, you'll get it. Superconscious of the spirit goes up. Then it goes up to divinity, ding, 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 ding. Divinity says, oh, taking responsibility. So now what happens is then now the energy called the mana goes downward. It goes down this side spiritually. That's how it goes. It goes down together mentally. So the subconscious, the conscious mind is the mental aspect. It goes down into the this, this super uh, goes on to the subconscious, and then it begins the process of taking the memory. So this energy is coming down, taking that memory and purifying it, taking it to pure energy. I just this is what divinity can do, and then it leaves it blank. It's released it. So now everything's back to zero again. And if I'm willing to keep doing that, that fellow will be okay. Because if you're okay, everybody else, if you're not, you can tell right away. And that's the, sim that's the simplicity of it all. Yes, sir? Yeah. So, problem. What, definition of problem, a memory in the subconscious. So if somebody comes and sees me, like when I went to the hospital, never worked on anybody. Everybody's perfect. The only thing that's imperfect is the data. That's the imperfection. Everybody's perfect. The client is perfect. The bear is perfect. The papa is perfect. I'm perfect. What's imperfect is the data, the information. So when you say, I love you, that, that begins a process of rem remedy. It remediates the problem, which is the memory. So the energy goes down into the subconscious, goes up to the, the divinity who can transmute, avoid the, the memory. Only this can do it. And then it sends on the mana both sides, comes down and erases both of those, and it cuts the tie. And you're free, as you were in the beginning. So you're free. It's working, and then you're free. And if once you're free, everything else is free on the earth. Is it so that disincarnate spirits, the spirits that you see, um, often cling into our energy body around our, our being and uh, hover there or stay there? And carry along with us? Uh, I would say yes. And if so, is Ho'oponopono to dispel those beings from your space? Well, let's say these are entities. I say entities. Well, if they are around or on you or possessing a person, Ho'oponopono is the thing. You say, I wish to do a Ho'oponopono on the entity's situation or problem that's affecting this patient or individual. So this is how you, because you, you don't know what it is. Could be an entity, or could be many entities. So whatever they are, you are including in an umbrella coverage. So that you're including all of them and then you transmute them. And if they are earthbound spirits, you ask that they be released to the path of light after you have done Ho'oponopono. And by so doing, you completely release them from these people or places. Because they may go to someone else. They may go to another person or a place or where they came from. But you completely move them into the light. Can it be 
done on oneself. Yes, you do it I on mean, one. I'm saying can. So yes, you I can. But when you when you do this, after you have done this, always be sure to put your force field of light around the person or yourself and put another ring around. Some people see an indigo ring, a gold ring, or a blue ring, whatever it is that comes to your mind. But you must put a force field around because it acts as a buffer, as a protection. You sit comfortably up against the back because when you breathe, you're also going to include family, relatives, and ancestors. <coughs> back to the beginning of creation. So you're not just breathing for yourself, but you're breathing for all of the generations that came before you, clearing whatever's back there and whatever, whatever it is, I don't know. So this is the position you would take. Thumb, four fingers sitting on your lap, both of your feet on the ground because you're, you're going to now include Mother Earth because Mother Earth is part of your your family and then you then and then you're just simply going to breathe as you breathe in you count to 10 however some of you will do it fast some of you do it slow so you breathe in as you count to 10 hold for 10 exhale for 10 hold for 10 that's one round i'm going to ask you to do 10 rounds and when you are then then you have this earthbound spirit moving around in the universe doesn't know where to go um, I used to be. I used to do a work, some work at in the hospital at Hawaii State Hos um, at a hospital in Honolulu, and the the director would ask me to come occasionally because they would be losing more and more people in the ER room. And so you you go. And I do my cleaning before I go, but if I didn't do it, I I I actually try to look. Okay, I'm not going to do my cleaning. So I show up. I walk into the room, the ER room, and from here down, I can't feel my body. You, and you look, you see all this earthbound spirits on the ceiling crying. I mean, it's, and the, as the room fills, more people will die. So now those kind of earthbound spirits we're responsible for and we're stuck with. So, so when you do this breathing, this allows, because you're doing it as the breathing, you erase this memory, this soul can go back into the light. That's how incredible this cleaning can be. So... I have a blue bottle here. So I'm going to show you how to make a special kind of water that will release memories, earthbound spirits, into these space beings. So here's the blue soul. Here's blue water. So here's, here's how to do it. So now I'm drinking it. As I drink it, it'll begin to work on erasing anything in your entities, earthbound space vibration, anything like that. This morning I came down looking for something to eat, and I heard, there's the cornflakes, you know, and so I looked at the cornflakes. My intellect was saying whether well, there was garbage in there, you know what I'm going? And I heard, hello, just eat the stuff, and I said, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so anything that's corn is a cleaning process. Now, you could do this corn in two ways. You could just simply say corn, so you say it, maize, rather, in your mind, you say maze, and so it's a deletion process. It'll, it'll give you, this is you, it'll give you the ability to reach up into the cosmos and, and literally hold the hands of the divine. This is what the corn is doing. It's reaching for the sun, up and up and up. You don't see it here, but what happens, remember I drew the three selves around it, so it's reaching up into the cosmos, but it's all zero, yeah? So zero, zero. So the idea is all you have to do is say or think maze and it, it will begin the process of deleting <coughs> memories, releasing earthbound spirits, working on different, closing down different dimensions. Thank you for watching this video. As I noted in this channel, Morna Simona and Ahiliakala Hulen are so different in their approaches to problem solving. Probably the only thing they have in common is the word Ho'oponopono. Please come back for the next video, in which I will show you how Dr. Hulen disassociated with his teacher Morna and became the new master of self-identity through Ho'oponopono.